Russell is director of Christian Answers, and I want to thank you for joining us for this particular program tonight. Our subject today is answering Islamic apologists. Now, I have more detailed explanations of that on previous shows. This is show number four in this particular series. But just to make it brief on an apologist, basically an apologist is someone who defends his religion, uh, proclaims it to be true, tries to give you reasons why it's true, and at the same time he tries to show why other religions are false and shouldn't be believed, but yet his religion, religion should be believed. And when we say answering Islamic apologists, we're basically talking about Muslims, people who believe the Islamic faith, and they are claiming that Islam is true and the other religions are false, and uh, they make proclamations along these lines. And so what we're doing in this series is going ahead and dealing with Islamic apologists. And for, this, for purposes of this particular series, as our main uh, topic, we've, we've chosen one of the leading Muslim apologists in the North American t continent, uh, that would be Dr. Jamal Badawi out of uh, uh, Canada. And uh, this is one of his tape series right here called Islamic Teachings. This is from his Package 6, Series J, Sources of Islam, the Quran, the Ultimate Miracle. And as I open it up here, you can see uh, these are 16 hours of soundtracks from Dr. Badawi's television shows that he does through the Islamic Information Center. And uh, as a matter of fact, Dr. Badawi, uh, who I consider to be a nice man, personally, he sent me these tapes free of charge, and uh, I didn't want to disappoint him by not listening to them. So, mm -hmm. as you can see, these are just some notes on this particular set. Uh, he sent me several sets of which we're, we're going to go through, but on each set, I uh, listened to the tapes and did the analysis, and now we're, we're uh, dealing with uh, answering... Islamic apologists. So joining me on this show to deal with this subject is our director of research, Steve Morrison. Steve, good to have you, brother. Well, thank you, Larry. Well, here we go again with Dr. Dr. Jamal. Mm -hmm. All right, to begin this show, we're going to get back to Dr. Badawi's tapes. We're now on tape 16 in his first album that he sent me. And the tape is entitled Contents of the Quran." manifestation of its source. And we'll just go through his, like we usually do on our shows here, we'll go through his points and then we'll analyze what he has said. Point A, Badawi continues to list a variety of intermixed surahs and verses from either Mecca or Medina given during differing time frames. B, Dr. Badawi refers to A. Yusuf Ali's translation during his commentary. C, Badawi asks, how could it fit together? when referring to intermixed Meccan and Medinan surahs and verses, and then concludes from this, it's a miracle, end quote. Therefore, the Quran is a miracle. And then the next point that Dr. Badawi makes is, Badawi states that the Quran must be from God because, one, the Quran says there is one God who says to be good with submission and love. Two, the Quran is filled with virtue, logic, morals, philosophy, and the proper way to live life. Three, the Quran has changed or transformed more lives than any other book in the history of the world. So, with those, those points made, in, in our last show we, we touched on it briefly. We can, we'll reiterate a little bit for our new viewers that missed the last show. But uh, Dr. Badawi is saying basically that over a 23-year period of time, Muhammad is giving revelations either from Medina or from Mecca. And uh, he's revealing surahs, uh, and these are uh, being remembered by people and so forth. And the Quran is being compiled, you might say, from memory or whatever. Of course, it wasn't really put together until after Muhammad's death. But anyway, what Dr. Badawi is saying by all this is that uh, there's different surahs, like we mentioned uh, from the previous show, that surah 5 was mainly given in, uh, in Mecca, but there's a verse in there from Medina, I believe it was, if my records out, 
uh, and then there was a, uh, uh, yeah, that, that was right. No, uh, the surah was given in Medina, but the surah 5.3 was given in Mecca. And then he also said that surah 6 was mainly given in Mecca, but uh, there's a, a verse in there from Medina. And he's basically arguing by this that, well, these, these interspersed time frame differential uh, revealed surahs from Muhammad prove that this is of divine origin because it all fits together so perfectly and so wonderfully. And uh, let my colleague Steve get in on this, and then I'll throw in more. Uh, wh what do you have to say about this intermixed, piecemeal uh, compilation of the, of the Quran? And he's arguing it's divine, it's from God, because somehow these surahs given in different places at different times uh, mesh together in a divine way. To where well, it proves it's from God. Well, that that would it, if if it was standardized under Uthman, and Uthman was actually the one who, uh, and, and actually really people under him who fit certain verses and certain surahs, and that would mean that the divine uh, composition would have to extend to going through Uthman too. And mm -hmm. you know that's kind of a, a funny argument. Uh, but so you can't just say when other people did it, in a, you know, and Muhammad didn't actually put a, put them all together necessarily. He put some together, but after his death, a lot was done. The other thing is that, all right, if I understand you correctly, it says that uh, uh, he's saying because it's filled with virtue, logic, morals, philosophy, and the proper way to live, then that somehow makes it divine or more divine. Okay, well, the 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 Hindu scriptures have that too. The the Upan, Upanishads, Rig Veda, uh, Mahabharata, and Muslims and Christians would agree that some of the logic and morals in there uh, are are not true and, not, and definitely not from God. Um, and and of course the Bible has that and has that today. So why does he want to say this applies to one thing or not? It's it's kind of a, a strange argument there. And the other thing, the Quran has changed or transformed more lives. Um, well, it, it, it certainly has transformed a lot of lives, uh, especially a lot of people who lost their lives because of Muslim persecution. Mm -hmm. So I guess I have to agree with uh, Badawi on that one. Uh, as far as uh, transformed lives, though, it doesn't really prove the point of his argument because when you look at the Bible, it's transformed millions of lives. But transformed for the good. <laughs> There's a little difference there. Right. But, but uh, also you can take... Uh, when Mao Zedong was alive in China, he had his little red book, and right. that was that was only the that was the second most published book in the world behind the Bible. And uh, you know, there's so many Chinese and Mao Zedong in his little red book. You know, being a communist and everything, he he affected and transformed right. a lot of lives. Uh, over 10 million people easily lost their lives in mainland China, especially during the Cultural Revolution. Mm -hmm. So you know, transforming can be in in, in a bad way, and and it totally transformed Chinese society from a very highly culture, well, I'm sorry, Chinese society in mainland China uh, to, to where maybe a lot of the culture and, and a lot of the stuff, they attempted to destroy it. And mm -hmm. it's, it's surged back, and of course there, there's culture in Taiwan too, right. but, 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 but it you know, just totally devastated the, uh, a lot of cultural things. So just because something transforms people's lives, it doesn't really mean it's good. I mean, Hitler wrote his book Mein Kampf. And it transformed a lot of people, made a lot of Nazis. And and, 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 and Karl Marx, you know, tra so, so just transformed yeah, lives. It's like is, right, so this argument really doesn't prove anything. It's just uh, an argument saying it's transformed, so it, it, it must be from God. And, and I already mentioned before this piecemeal uh, compilation of, of the Quran, and, and it wasn't even assimilated when Muhammad was alive. It was put together later by other people, and they're trying to figure out who knows what, what surah that Muhammad said, and who remembers what, and what piece of bark something's written on that someone wrote down something Muhammad said, and, and, they come to, and, they, and they're putting this together later. They're just putting it together, and, and, and anybody says, okay, that this, this piece of palm leaf has a, a surah written on it, and this piece of bark over here, and that old guy over there, he remembers something, and all three of these things kind of relate they're all talking about uh, something to do with a certain subject. Let's say, uh, you know, just just make something up. Maybe maybe being good to your neighbor or something. And and, and so naturally, whoever's Muslim compiling neighbor. it just puts it together because they say, well, this looks like it might go together because this or we we got this from over here and this guy and this palm leaf over here and it all looks like it's similar and they put it together. It just 
I mean, that doesn't prove that something's divine. Right. Just because Badawi says, here's a piecemeal thing, and just look at the surah. It, it, it looks like it goes together. Well, if you give me a bunch of jumbled stuff, I could probably assimilate something with similarities. I mean, I mentioned last time in the, the previous show, I did an article for a, a, a gaming magazine, uh, Avalon Hill Company, and uh, it took me a couple of years to put the article together, but I, I just kind of put it together over time and then finally came out with something. But I still use logical thought to assimilate that material, even though it was at different time frames. There was nothing divine about that, right. but uh, anyway. But 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 Larry, what, one thing Badawi says here is like, let's. I think we need to investigate a little bit more that he brings up is see how it has transformed lives. Now, on one hand, you can look at the Abbasids and things like that and say, well, that's not really a fair picture of Islam because you had these corrupt rulers and they were using some stuff from the Quran, but they weren't really following the whole thing. Mm -hmm. All right. Likewise, in the West, the West is not a Christian society. The West is maybe a pseudo-Christian society where it has some aspects of the Bible, but it, but it's not that. And talking to an, a number of Muslim people, you know, since September 11th, I think I can understand how, how Muslims are have a real dilemma. They look at the transformed countries and transformed people of Islam. They look at the Taliban. They look at Indonesia. They look at the Sudan. Uh, they look at, at, at even, even the violence that the, that the, in Egypt that the government is attempting to control, and they say, boy... This just doesn't look like what we want to do. And then they go and look at the West, and they say, well, we like a lot of stuff in the West. But the West has its, its ugly side, too. It has abortion and immorality and, 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 and things like that. And it's like, well, if you're going to be uh, righteous and live in the West, it's kind of up to you, where, you know, Muslim society, you know, things are more enforced. And so they look at that, and they say, well, they're not really happy with what they have. They might be very disappointed in Islam. But that they they don't want to you know they don't think that the West is perfect either and and it's definitely not. And I'm saying that don't look to either one. Look to God. Amen. It's God who transforms the lives and and Muslim society can't do it and Western society can't do it either. That's right. And you know when uh, Doctor Badaway says, well look the Quran's true because of the virtue morals and and live the right way. But when I look at the Hadith and I look at the Quran and he's talking about curse the Christians and the Jews and right. and slay them wherever you find them you know the pagans and or whatever. Uh, and he's got all these rigid persecution type uh, rules and regulations, especially in the Hadiths and things. Mm -hmm. This kind of morality, this kind of virtue, uh, as Badawi refers to it, isn't any kind of good morality that I see from right. a biblical perspective. This is not the kind of morality that Jesus Christ would teach. Yeah. Uh, this, is, this is almost like an anti-Christ morality. Yet... Uh, uh, Badawi is saying that well the morals and virtue and all this is so good but here's, here's a religion and we've talked about this many of our shows on Islam uh, in, in some places you can get a temporary marriage and then you can get a divorce right after that. So I want to marry this woman for a week or a day and then divorce her. They, 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 that's Shiite Islam and a small minority of Sunni, right? Okay, so you see and that, kind of, that kind of morality is no morality at all according to the Bible. Right. And so I would say from his arguments here, he's not proving anything other than the fact that uh, the Quran is not divine and is not inspired. And the arguments he's used to say it's divine and a linguistic miracle are, are to totally fallacious. So anyway, that's my opinion. You can take it for what it's worth. <laughs> We're just trying to look at it from a logical perspective and bring in the biblical perspective at the same time. Dr. Battery refers to A. Yusuf Ali. A. Yusuf Ali's translation of the Quran itself in the footnotes mentions other versions of the Quran besides the one Sunnis accept today. How could the Quran fit together? The miracle of compilation was in Uthman's time, not Muhammad's. Ubay's version of the Quran, for example, has two less surahs, known as chapters, than the one today. The Quran is filled with virtue, logic, morals, etc. Islamic morals in the Hadith and Quran in many ways are much looser than Christian morals. For example, sex with captive women is permitted. Temporary marriage is allowed according to Shiites and a few Sunnis. Killing demis, that is, non-Muslims, under the, the protection of a Muslim state, bears no penalty except the Muslim murderer will not be able to smell 
in Islamic paradise. Beating your wife, including beating her to cause pain, as found in the Hadith Sahih Muslim 2, 21-27, is permitted. Muslim morals are more legalistic and superstitious, i.e., such as beware of the evil eye, Muslim men should not wear yellow or play chess. Well, let's go now to the next album of uh, Jamal Badawi. We finished, we finished uh, package six, so that one is now done. And we will go to, uh, uh, looks like number eight. This will be the next one. So we're going to begin now on this next, next uh, tape series, which is entitled uh, Package 8, Series K, Jesus, Beloved Messenger of Allah. And uh, 16 cassettes, 16 hours, coming from the Islamic Information Foundation. And we're going to analyze uh, his arguments here. And apparently, from the title of this uh, tape album, it's going to deal with uh, Jesus, the beloved messenger of Allah. So starting with his first tape in this series on the introduction, uh, and you can see it on your screen at home, we have uh, the introduction, point A. Badawi says there are lots of surahs about Jesus, including uh, Jesus' birth, etc. Uh, he quotes Surah 19 and 19, for instance. He gets into these stories about the palm tree and the, and the, and the dates that the Virgin Mary got and so forth. Uh, B, Badawi says there are 124,000 prophets of which, and then we go to C, Badawi says that the five purest of the pure prophets, so you got these 124,000 prophets, but there's five of them that are really the, the best of the best. And he says those five are Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad. Okay, and then D, Badawi says the soul of the prophets continue, continues to live. E, Badawi says Muhammad says he is the nearest kin to Jesus in the world. So Badawi is saying that Muhammad had said that he was the nearest kin to Jesus on the face of the earth. And then on F, Jesus is mentioned in, in 11 of 114 surahs. And G, Badawi quotes Reverend Herbert W. Armstrong uh, as a Christian authority and source for some of the things he'll be saying. Uh, okay, with these points mentioned, I'd like to say, as point A says, Surah 1919, there's many passages in the Quran that talk about Jesus' birth, uh, Jesus being born out of a palm tree, that the Virgin Mary, uh, you know, shook a palm tree or something, got a date so she could eat it. She was hungry. Uh, Jesus made uh, birds uh, come out of clay and did, did a few uh, things like that. Uh, so there's these these stories and some, as Badaway already mentioned in the previous show, some new information about the Virgin Mary and Jesus mentioned here. And Jesus is mentioned in 11 out of 114 surahs. Uh, but the question is, are these things that the Quran's saying about Jesus accurate or not? And uh, we'll, we'll discuss that in just a moment. He also mentions the fact that in Islamic tradition, 124,000 prophets, of which five of the, uh, of the purest of the pure are these I just mentioned. And, of course, if you caught show number two in this series, we went through the sinlessness of the prophets of Islam. And we covered all these guys and looked and saw, and I ask anyone that needs to check this reference, go back and get show number two in this series, we found out from the Quran and the Bible that Noah and Abraham and Moses and Muhammad were all sinners. They committed sins. They weren't sinlessly perfect. But we find that both from uh, Islamic sources and the Quran uh, uh, and the Bible, that Jesus was sinless and sinlessly perfect biblically speaking. So uh, uh, very interesting contrast to these other, uh, other four purest of the pure prophets. Uh, and of course he talks about the souls of the prophets going on to live. And I thought that was interesting where Muhammad said he was nearest in kin to Jesus of anyone in the world. Now, uh, you know, there's a lot of people that have egos, but uh, <laughs> that, uh, that, that's a pretty big one right there. Well, anyway, brother, any comments on some of this? Well, uh, 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 this may sound unusual to non-Muslims that, that the Quran would say so many positive things about Jesus, 
but Badaway is correct here. Uh, it, 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 it does. But the thing is that if Jesus is such a great messenger, then why don't they listen to his message? Of course, they say, oh, well, anything that disagrees with Islam must have been corrupted. And it's like, you know, there's no evidence of that. We, we, uh, we have the, the early New Testament manuscripts, and, and, and because of that, it's like, you know, it's, it doesn't sound like you're a very good messenger if, if your disciples didn't preserve your message. Right, they're saying now, keep in mind, they're saying a lot of good things about Jesus in the Quran, like he's a great prophet and everything, but at the same time, the Quran is saying Jesus was not crucified. Jesus is not the Son of God. Say not that Allah has a son. Uh, so at the same time, from a biblical Christian perspective, we got to say that the Quran says a lot of terrible things about Jesus. Because, about Jesus' message, yeah. Exactly, because they're denying exactly what Jesus said about himself, what his disciples said about himself, what the Bible says about him, what God the Father said about Jesus. And as Steve just mentioned, the manuscript evidence, uh, which Muslim apologists never seem to be able to deal with, and the reason they can't deal with it is that the evidence is there. And all they can do is the three-monkey approach. I see, I don't see that manuscript evidence, I don't hear it, and I don't want to talk about it. And uh, that's you know, why we're going to keep mentioning it all the time, because if the, the Muslim apologists don't want to see it or know about it, we're going to mention it because the evidence for the Bible manuscripts and the virality of, of what the Scripture says about Jesus is real and it's true and it's 600 years before Muhammad and the Quran ever came, ever came along. So uh, a lot of times, you, you know, for Muhammad, Muhammad to say, well, I'm next in kin or I'm the closest to kin to Jesus, and there's no one else in the world, you would think that someone that would make a statement like that would at least be agreeing with what Jesus himself said. But unfortunately, that's not the case. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go to tape number two in this. Uh, wait, 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 oh, you wait, want to say wait, one more thing? Go ahead. Yeah, the last point, which sounds like it, it, it's, it's a pretty serious problem. He said, he, by the way, quotes Reverend Armstrong, and I assume that's oh, yes, Herbert, 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 Herbert w. w. Armstrong. As if he were a Christian authority and source. Well, let me say this. You have to understand... A lot of Muslims worship Ali. If you're a Muslim, do you agree or disagree? Okay, let me tell you the background of that. There are a lot of Gulat sect Muslims who, who, who worship Ali. And so for me to say within the world of Islam that there are people who do that, that's a correct statement. statement. But if I were to make a statement implying that all Muslims worship Ali, that would certainly be false. Or if I were to say that all respected Muslims uh, you know, worship Ali, then that would be a false statement. And, and, and it sounds like that's what Badawi is, is saying here. Yes, Reverend Herbert W. Armstrong, he was in a cult of Christianity, um, and he may have called himself a Christian, but he was not recognized by any genuine Christians uh, any more than a worshiper Ali is recognized in, let's say, you know, by authorities in Saudi Arabia as a, as a true Muslim. So, so we ha have to be accurate here. Is that yes, within the Christian world you say that, but you can't say that he's a regular Christian. Yeah, source. because he's generalized and he's making someone like Herbert W. Armstrong, who who started this worldwide Church of God, and in uh, Herbert W. Armstrong's many teachings and books and his television shows, he said that we would become. God and be part of the God family ourselves later. So Herbert W. Armstrong taught that he would become part of God and become, get in the God family. Now, see, that's almost as bad as uh, what Steve was just saying about a Muslim believing that you worship Allah, but you also worship Ali. Uh, and Ali was the, grand, the, the, the next in line to Muhammad. Uh, according to Shiites, he was the rightful caliph. He was he was a son-in-law of son of Muhammad. Son-in-law. Uh, he he, he was actually the the fourth caliph according to the Sunnis. Right. But but, but nevertheless, they uh, the Sunni Muslims, the Orthodox, would not agree that he should be worshipped as with God. Right. So so if you make a blanket statement, you know that that Muslims or all Muslims worship Ali, uh, implying all Muslims, and that's not correct. But you have to specify. So if if Badawi makes you know if he. Uh, referred to Reverend Armstrong, and he didn't qualify that to say this is you know gulat or cult Christian teaching. Then, right. then he and he might certainly did. And there. we'll find out. We'll find more examples along these lines later in this series. So let's go on to the second tape in this in this particular package. It's called Jesus in Islam, and Jesus is nature. A. Jesus speaks as a baby in the Quran. B. Surah five seventy three denies the doctrine of the Trinity. C. Surah 345, Badawi says Jesus is sinless 
and close to Allah. But Badawi says all prophets are sinless, citing John the Baptist having purity in Surah 19.13. D. Badawi defines the word pure and its meaning which would include all the prophets. E. Badawi says Muhammad's mission was for the world, but all other prophets, including Jesus, was not for the world, but for a specific time, people, and place. F. Jesus' mission was the same as other prophets. Just follow Allah. G. Badawi says Jesus' jail or gospel, was different than what we have today in the Bible. Answers to some of Dr. Badawi's points are Surah 573 and the Trinity. Many think this was derived from what are called infancy apocryphal gospels made up centuries later after Jesus. These were available in the Middle East at the time of Muhammad. Surah 573 through 75, 116, it identifies the three as Father, Jesus, and the Virgin Mary. This is a gross misunderstanding of the Trinity. There was apparently a small sect in Arabia called Kaliridians that believed Mary was a goddess. Surah 345, Jesus is sinless. Many modern Muslims believe that since Jesus was sinless, Muhammad must have been also. However, in Surah 40, verse 55, and 48, verses 1 and 2, Muhammad asked Allah for forgiveness for his sin or frailty. Sahith Muslim, volume 1, 1695, says Muhammad prayed, quote, I wronged myself and make a confession of my sin. Forgive all my sins, end quote. Bukhari, 1, 7, 19, 7, 11, 781, 6, 3, 8, 319, and 8, 407 prior also mention Muhammad's sins. Specific things, sins perhaps, mentioned in the Bukhari, volume 1, 234, 8, 794, 795, include cutting off people's limbs, burning out their eyes, and making them thirst as they died after their limbs were amputated. See Bukhari 8, 796, 797, 6, 198 prior, as well as Fiqh as Sunna, volume 1, page 133. Badaway's point 2D, redefining purity. This is especially interesting as Muslims consider Adam a prophet also. If Adam was always pure, yet he sinned and got kicked out of the Garden of Eden, purity has been robbed of its meaning. Local versus global mission. Contrary to what Badawi and many Muslims today say, Jesus and the Gospels said he was the light of the world. 1 John 2 verse 1 also says that Jesus was the atoning sacrifice for the whole world. Obviously, if someone rejects the record of the Gospels and the New Testament, they can make up what they want about Jesus. Jesus' Gospel different from today? It is not that Badawi and most Muslims believe this. Rather, they have to believe this, or Islam falls. If Jesus taught God's message as God's prophet, and a later prophet contradicts Jesus' genuine teaching from God, then the later prophet is obviously not from God. Muhammad does not teach what Jesus taught. Islamic testimony of the reliability of the Gospels? Aisha, Muhammad's beloved wife, said that Muhammad was taught the Injil, that's the Gospels, according to both Bukhari, Volume 4, 605, and Sahith Muslim, Volume 1, 301, page 98, where she tells that Khadija took Muhammad to a Christian convert who used to read the Gospels in Arabic. In contrast to Badawi, the Muslim Quranic commentator Fazlur Rahman also acknowledges that the Gospel we and Muhammad have is the Injil. 
Finally, Surah 5, verses 46 through 48, says that Christians are the, quote, people of the gospel, end quote. Concerning historical evidence, there is much historical evidence to verify the Bible and its reliable transmission down through time to us. God preserves his word, as is taught not only in the Bible, but in the Quran as well. Here are a few references. Answers to Muslim Objections Of course, the Muslims object quite strenuously to the Bible record because it contradicts what the Quran says and the Islamic Hadith chapter and verse on major topics. The manuscript evidence and variation changes as are recorded show no change in Christian theology throughout time. For those who want a harmonization of the Gospels, this can be found at the website www.muslimhope.com backslash gospel.htm. Muslim arguments against the Bible can likewise be used against the Quran. And different word usage is also similar in the Quran. So many Islamic arguments used against the Bible can at the same time be used against the Quran. But Muslim apologists fail to mention this. So anyway, uh, I'll say a couple more things in a minute, but I want to give Steve a chance to jump in on some of this. All right, well, a couple of things on Surah 573. Uh, he brings this up as a major difference, and I think he's correct to bring it up as a difference. It says, they disbelieve who say, Allah is one of three, in a parenthesis, in a trinity. For there is no God except one God. Okay, trinity doesn't deny that. If they desist not from their word, and as a blasphemy, verily a grievous chastisement will befall the disbelievers among them. So the Quran is saying here that, the, that you'll have a grievous chastisement if you believe in the Trinity. While uh, Christians say that the Father is God and the Son is God and, you know, and the Holy Spirit is God, that's a key doctrine in the Bible. So you know, they can't be worshiping the same God. Uh, Muslims don't uh, worship Jesus and they don't call God the Father and they don't, worship the Holy, they don't say the Holy Spirit is God. So when someone says that Muslims and Christians worship the same God, they're basically not saying anything about Islam or Christianity, but only about their own ignorance. That's it. And, and, and I have a question here, kind of to ask Muslims, is that what if you were convinced, and I think you should be, what if you were convinced that we have Jesus' message today? Then what is the point of respecting the messenger and disbelieving the message? So, hypothetically speaking, if you were convinced that we have Jesus' message, would you follow Jesus' message? And if not, it's like, I don't think that you care anything about the truth and you care about anything about the That's truth. That's right. God. In fact, Jesus even said in Luke 6, 46, he says, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and you don't do the things I say? <laughs> what kind of Lord is that? You know, uh, he, if you're not listening to what he has to say, you're not doing what he says, he's really no Lord at all. And uh, actually, people like that are showing him the ultimate disrespect. Mm. Anyway, let's move on here to tape number three in this set. Tape three, entitled, The End of Jesus' Mission. A. The Quran does not need to be confirmed by anyone, Badawi says, including scholars, historians, etc. B. Surah 4, 157 through 158, says Jesus was not crucified. Badawi says that Jesus was saved by God and will die after he returns again. C. Badawi sees, quote, no need of a physical resurrection of Jesus, end quote. D. Badawi quotes the Gospel of Barnabas to prove Jesus was not crucified. E. Badawi says Jesus never claimed to be God or the Son of God. In response to Badawi's 3a, the Quran needs no confirmation. In the Middle East, as in India, America, and Europe, there are cultic or gulak groups, that all say their book or teaching needs no confirmation. Badawi's statement could be said by a Bektashi, Alawite, Druze, or Sufi, as well as a Hare Krishna or Muni. It is certain that Badawi would not agree with them. However, his argument is no better than theirs. No need of Jesus' resurrection? The crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus is mentioned in nearly every Christian church father 
from 97 to 98 A.D. on and is in the manuscripts of the New Testament we have from 150 A.D. on. One of the following has to be true. 1. There was a catastrophic failure of Allah to rightly guide His followers for almost 600 years before Muhammad came on the scene. 2. The Quran and Muhammad taught a very significant falsehood here. Badawi quotes the fraudulent Gospel of Barnabas. Dr. Badawi is forced to use fraudulent material to substantiate his claims. While the Quran says Jesus was the Messiah, the Gospel of Barnabas, written in Italian in the Middle Ages, probably by a new and confused Muslim, contradicts the Quran, saying the Messiah is not Jesus, but Muhammad. See our Christian Answers video series, Can Believing the Muslim Religion Send Someone to Hell? For further documentation on this subject. Badawi says that Jesus never claimed to be God or the Son of God. How does Dr. Badawi know what Jesus said? Badawi simply does not believe what the Gospel records say. Badawi refuses to believe Peter's great confession that Jesus was the Son of the living God in Matthew chapter 16 verses 13 through 20, Mark chapter 8 verses 27 through 30, and Luke chapter 9 verses 18 through 20. Jesus was worshipped as God by Jesus' disciples, spoken of approvingly in the Quran in Matthew 14.33. The women worshipped Jesus in Matthew 28.9, and the blind man worshipped Jesus in John 9.38. See also John 1.1, 1, 1, John 5.18, 5.23, 8.58, 10.30, 17.5, 20.31, 22.31, 22.32, 23.32, 20, 28, and Hebrews chapter 1, verse 8, to name just a few. Jesus not being crucified, it seems to be a central tenet, not just of Badawi, but, but of, of Muslims in general. And of course, it, it's in Surah 4, 157-158, but it's like denial of Jesus' death on the cross and knowledge of his resurrection, which is a, a core doctrine of Christianity, according to, to 1 Corinthians 15, 1, a primary doctrine, it's like, you know, that's what Satan really wants to convince the world to believe. And so, you know, we might say it's transformed, you know, the world and maybe a core of the world, you know, is now, uh, you know, resists here in the gospel because they have this other book that they are told that, that, that shouldn't be questioned and shouldn't be confirmed. Right. So the, the Quran says Jesus was not cru crucified. And, and Badawi goes on to say, like the Quran does, Jesus was not the Son of God. And then Badawi says that Jesus never claimed to be the Son of God, and we, which of we, course is a lie. You just look at, uh, I mean, I don't want to call Dr. Badawi a liar, okay? Now let me uh, restate that. that. That is not true what Dr. Badawi said there because in the he, Bible... He, he did tell a lie. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, okay. but uh, uh, the Bible clearly says throughout, and Jesus himself said he was the Son of God. In fact, that's why he was convicted in, Ma in Mark chapter 14, verses 61 and following, they, they asked him about that, and he said yes, and they rent their clothes and say, what need have we of further witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy yourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and throughout the scripture, from, from beginning to end there, you're going to find, even in the Old Testament, I, I've quoted Psalm 2 before, kiss the son, lest he be angry and you perish in a moment. Uh, God talks about his own son there. He talks about him throughout Hebrews chapter 1, yeah. everywhere. So, so, so if, if Badawi was trying to say this, but what about when Jesus accepted worship? And what about when Thomas said to Jesus, my Lord and my God? And we have a whole hour series uh, showing how Jesus claimed, both in words and in deeds, uh, claimed he was God. And, right. and, and, and I mean, accepting worship, forgiving what only God can forgive. Right. He also showed how he was God. And it seems kind of um, a little disreputable. Uh, to uh, 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 to say Jesus never claimed. Now, to be what's God. interesting here, and you you just uh, triggered my memory on this, and that's for the viewers at home. Uh, this point about Badawi says Jesus never claimed to be God or the Son of God. See what you have to understand there in Badawi's mind, and the way he explains it throughout his tapes and things, is wherever the Bible clearly says that Jesus said he was the Son of God or something, Badawi says that doesn't count because that was put into the, the mouth of Jesus by someone else, either a non-eyewitness or someone else who claimed to be John, writing the Gospel of John, or someone that claimed to be you know, Peter or whoever. 
Yeah, it, Badawi always discounts any Bible verse that actually says these things. So when he says Jesus never claimed that, it's true in his mind in the sense that he's only accepting what he believes are the words of Jesus. So he picks and chooses whatever Jesus said. And so in his mind, Jesus never claimed it. But anywhere where Jesus would claim in the Bible, Badawi would say, oh, well, that... That was interpolated. Somebody stuck that in there. That's not really true. And that's but, the way but, he's but, arguing. That but point. but if, if we have uh, manuscripts of the Bible, uh, you know, from 100 to 150 A.D., and you think of the time period, 70 years from when Jesus was crucified on the cross, and yet the, the uh, Sunni Hadiths we have uh, collected over 200 years later, then it's like we have a far stronger case to say all the Sunni Hadiths were all put in the, in the mouth of Muhammad than you do for, for the Bible. Well, of course, of course, but they don't want you to look or think about that. Mm -hmm. What I find interesting here is that Badawi, uh, and we'll find this out as we move into the deeper into his tapes here, he, he will say these things and argue these things, but then at the same time, he'll get the Bible verses that are so clear that say what we are saying right now about what the Bible says, that Jesus is the Son of God, he was crucified. He'll say that all that stuff was put in there. He'll admit that that's in the Bible. He'll admit that's in the Bible. But then he'll say, oh, that just came from Greek mythology or pagan sources, or it was added in there by some fakers later. Uh, we'll get into all that, but that's how he's arguing and I don't think it, it holds water from the evidence. Battle is tape number four, entitled The Second Coming of Jesus. A. Battle relates the generic Islamic version of the return of Jesus. B. Jesus will return. That's found in Surah 4361 and Surah 4159 in, in the Quran and is related in at least 70 hadiths. An example of this is in Sahih al Bakari, Volume 3. Number 425, break the cross and kill the pigs, end quote. Badawi goes on to say, cross Christianity is wrong. C, eating pigs is wrong and the law should be restored. D, Jesus will come down when there is great evil and the Antichrist is ruling on the earth. E, Jesus will come down in the eastern part of Damascus near a white tower wearing two yellow garments. He will be of medium height or reddish and fair complexion and his hair will look like water is trickling down it even though it is not wet. He will come down at daybreak and descend into the middle of the Muslim army that is getting ready to fight the Antichrist and his armies. Jesus will slay the Antichrist and the Antichrist armies will be destroyed. Jesus will kill the Antichrist at Lud, near Tel Aviv, and then Jesus will go on a pilgrimage to the Kaaba in Mecca. Jesus will then live about 45 years, get married, have kids, and be buried near Muhammad. Jesus' resurrection will come sometime after that. Jesus will return according to two surahs and 70 hadiths. Cross Christianity, as referred to by Dr. Badawi, is in the New Testament that God chose to preserve from the very earliest manuscripts we have for at least 600 years before Muhammad. Philippians chapter 3 verses 18 and 19 found in the New Testament states very clearly, quote, they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things, end quote. Badawi and the Islamic religion are in deep trouble for denying the cross of Christ if Philippians chapter 3, verses 18 and 19 are to be taken seriously. Eating pig is wrong and the law should be restored. Why do Dr. Badawi and the Hadith mention pigs but not camels? In the Old Testament, it is just as wrong to eat camel meat, which Muhammad ate, as it is to eat pig meat. A Muslim might argue that Muhammad, being a prophet of God, had the right to announce God's, quote, abrogation, end quote, of the earlier restriction. If so, then perhaps he needs to understand that the sinless prophet Jesus had the same right. Since all foods were pronounced clean by Jesus and his apostles, why would Muhammad, 
quote, abrogate, end quote, what Jesus declared to be clean. This is totally alien to what you get in the Bible. The Bible doesn't say anything like this. You get, you get the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ in the Bible, and then you get the glorious return of Jesus coming in uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, for instance, and also uh, Revelation chapter 19, so I think starting around verse 6, uh, and other places, the glorious uh, coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's definitely uh, not... Uh, uh, coming into a Muslim army to destroy the Antichrist and then go on a pilgrimage to Mecca so he can then go get married, live about 45 years, and then croak. You know what I mean? This is just not what you get in the Bible. This is a totally alien version that uh, just has no place uh, in, the, in the actual Jesus of the Bible. You yeah. Here? Uh, what, 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 well, just to note that a lot of what he is saying is, is not from the Quran itself, but from the Hadith. From the which Hadith, there's 70 Hadith. Yeah, which mentioned. is uh, accepted by Sunnis, of course. So Right. Maybe not necessarily by the Shiites. Yeah. Okay, let's go to tape five. Comparative Christology, one and two. Badawi, uh, point A, Badawi says, there is not a single Quranic verse that is unfavorable to Jesus. B, Badawi says, Quran shows more respect for Jesus than the New Testament. C. Badawi does an apologetic why the Quran does not teach that Jesus is God. Badawi here tries to deal with verses in the Quran uh, that some Christians try to use to imply the divinity of Christ, such as Jesus being called holy, pure, spirit from Allah, a word from Allah, anointed. D. Badawi states that the Quran clearly states that Jesus was only a messenger, a prophet, and a faithful servant of Allah. E. Badawi states that Jesus is a word from Allah, not the word logos, as found in John 1 1. So uh, basically, we just have a, a, a straight denial of uh, the deity of Christ as far as these. These things go, uh, and we've already discussed this in some detail, so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time here talking about all the verses in the Bible that say Jesus is God, or Jesus himself said he was God. And look, in the very reference we saw, that last point there, where uh, Badawi says uh, that Jesus is not the word of God, Logos, as it says in John 1.1. 1, 1. See, even Badawi knows John 1.1 1, 1 says that <laughs> Jesus is God. And he'll admit that throughout his tapes. But he's still going to deny it because it doesn't agree with what he believes the, you know, about the Quran and what the Quran teaches. So what's funny about it is he'll be denying uh, all the Christian beliefs, but at the same time he, uh, he acknowledges that these Christian beliefs are in the Bible. These verses are in the Bible. These yeah. verses are in the Bible and he admits it. That's, what I, uh, that's, that's just one of those, those funny things about, about all this uh, that, that you get. So uh, anyway, I, I think it is uh, rather staggering, rather staggering that Badawi says that uh, there's not one unfavorable verse to Jesus in the Quran. And he also says that, uh, that the Quran shows more respect to Jesus than the New Testament. But the, but the, how, how, but the Quran rejects the words that we have of Jesus. Right, right. Well, what, what you've got to realize is what does the, the Bible say about Jesus? The Bible says he's the son of God. He's, he's, he's the Lord of Lord and the King of Kings. Uh, he's the Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and the ending. He's, he's the express image of God, as Hebrews chapter 1 says. He's, he's the Almighty... The, he's, he's the mighty God, as you get in uh, Isaiah 9, 6. It, all the angels of God are supposed to worship him. G, uh, Thomas in John twenty twenty eight says, My Lord, my God, to Jesus. He receives worship. He's honored. He's praised. He's on the right hand of God. He's, on the, he's the lamb on the throne with the Father. Uh, you look at Revelation. It's, it's incredible. He's a faithful and true witness. Uh, there's no way the Quran even gets close to giving the kind of praise to Jesus mm -hmm. that the New Testament and the Old Testament give to Jesus because the Old Testament and New Testament exalt Jesus as being God. And when, you, when you're God, you get the ultimate praise and worship. And since the Quran says he wasn't God, he wasn't the Son of God, he wasn't crucified, he's just a man, he's all these things, 
the Quran actually insults him and brings him down. So for, for Badawi to say this is absolutely staggering. It, it blows my mind he could even come up with so, even a suggestion such as that. Mm -hmm. But then on the other hand, he simply uh, dismisses any Bible verse he doesn't like. It, it's, it's untrue. So, so to kind of summarize, okay, the Bible shows that Jesus is God, not just Jesus' words, but also other verses. The Quran does not say that Jesus is God, and yet Badawi says the Quran has a higher respect for Jesus right. than the Bible. Um, he's not telling the truth here. I mean, anyone that looks at the comparison of the Jesus of the Bible with the comparison of the Quran, there is no comparison. Jesus is exalted in the Bible, and he's brought down in the Quran. And Muhammad is actually exalted above Jesus. And so uh, the Quran is actually a slap in the face and an insult to the Lord Jesus Christ as far as the biblical record goes. Right, right, right. right. And you can say that even though the, the Bible doesn't mention Muhammad at all, you could also say in the Bible that Jesus is above Muhammad as well as everybody else because in Philippians 2 it says Jesus is given the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow in heaven and earth and under the earth. So every knee presumably includes Muhammad's knee. That's right. You know, believers and unbelievers at the at the. At the, oh, at the oh, by the way, that reference you just mentioned is another verse that Badawi doesn't like. Well, it, it's it, too it, obvious. Yeah, it, it's, it, it, it's it, like it, John 1-1 it, it, to Badawi. He, okay. it, it's very clear. And he he would say that's another interpolated passage. But but but, but I guess my my thing for Badawi is that well, if the Quran is it it has more respect for Jesus, and in Philippians two says that every knee will bow to Jesus, then is Badawi ready to bow to Jesus? Right, he's not, and so that shows that, that actually uh, Islam bring you know insults Jesus rather than exalts him, and it gives him this kind of phony lip service that isn't. Uh, meeting the reality of the situation, which is Jesus is the exalted Lord, and he's worthy of worship, and the yeah. Muslims refuse and, to do it. And, 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 I, and I'm not sure, Larry, that, that it's quite accurate to say that the Quran insults Jesus. It's just they want to put him in a different place from his his real place. So I'm not sure I would say insult, but they just want to make him to a Jesus who's merely a prophet, and it's not the same Jesus as Jesus in the Bible. Well, I guess speaking from a Christian perspective and an opinion, you know, to me it's an insult to take God Almighty and bring him down and make him into something other than what he is. Mm -hmm. To me, that... It, they are doing that. And, yeah. and to me, that seems rather insulting from a Christian point of view. And uh, as we mentioned here, we've already dealt with a lot of these other things that he says in these other points. In show number two, where we talk about the sinlessness of the prophets of Islam. Okay, let's move on to tape number six. Claims attributed to Jesus and approach of study. A, Badawi states that he is trying to be an un to be as unbiased as possible. B, Badawi does not believe in the divinity of Jesus. <laughs> I think that's obvious. Uh, C, Badawi begins a, a rundown of deity of Christ Bible verses so he can attempt to refute them, such as 1, Matthew 7, 28-29, where Jesus talks about you know authority being given to him. 2, John 7, 45-46, uh, where the people say no one ever... Uh, 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 spoke like th this man speaks. Yeah, what, what? Three, Colossians 2, 9, all the fullness of the uh, of deity dwells bodily. Uh, Philippians 2, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Where have we heard that before? Mm -hmm. Five, 1 Timothy 3, 16, uh, Jesus is God manifested in flesh. Six, Colossians 1, 15 through 17, Jesus was the image of God. And John 1, 1 and 2, the word was God. Okay, and uh, then we go on here. D, Badawi says most of the deity of Christ references were, are made by Paul, who never saw Jesus during Jesus' ministry. And John, whose gospel is subject to a great deal of skepticism by biblical scholars as to whether it was really written by John or someone else. E, Badawi says there, these witnesses to the deity of Christ are unreliable because many uh, religions have leaders whose leaders were deified by their followers whether the leaders claim deity or not, such as Gandhi, Buddha, etc. Mohammed, yeah. Uh, yeah. F. Uh, Badawi does not believe any biblical references where Jesus claims deity. Uh, be he doesn't believe any of those references where Jesus claims deity because the so called gospels were written by someone else and there is no evidence that Jesus himself made these claims. So uh, he uh, goes on to say here, finish this up, in Badawi's quote, humble opinion, end quote, there is nowhere in the New Testament that Jesus speaks and says, quote, he is God, worship me, end quote. H. Badawi says the Old Testament says there is only one God. 
And that would exclude Jesus' battle, he says. I, battle, he says, the deity of Christ verses are subject to interpretation and in the, quote, context of the Bible, end quote, cannot mean divinity of Jesus. But, but that's kind of a cop-out, really. Well, yeah. Well, I think all these arguments are cop-outs, but we're going to talk about that in a second. Let me finish this up. J. Badawi says, the Bible says that no one has ever seen God. And K. Badawi quotes Bible verses that quote the word Father continually. So he's trying to uh, uh, what, 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 show a distinction between Father and Son and that you can't have two gods uh, if Jesus is God, then who's this Father? And if the Father's God, that means Jesus couldn't be God, and so, so forth. So hold on, so, what, what is Badawi saying about the Father? Does he say that the Father is all? Oh yeah, he says uh, the Father is God. He, he okay. argues that point. Okay. Uh, because uh, most Muslims, uh, I think, will disagree with Badawi in this point because Allah wouldn't have wouldn't be a Father because Allah wouldn't have a son or any sons. Right. So, but, so he's maybe. In fact, I don't think he, he never addresses that particular point that you just brought up in his tapes because he's always assuming the Father is God. Mm -hmm. And that Jesus is talking to his Father who is God, and therefore Jesus can't be God himself because he's praying to God, which eliminates him from being God. And this Father has to be God, but he never addresses the very point you just made. That was a very good point, right. as a matter of fact. But now let me, let's go back for a second uh, as our time in this show starts to run out. Uh, I mentioned all those Bible verses, and you, you brought a good point up there. We've got five minutes to go, so we're going to have to do a rapid fire on this section. And I think we can do it, because this is fairly simple stuff. But anyway, uh, Badawi explains from Matthew uh, 7 and, and John 7, uh, you know, he says that Christians use these to show that Jesus is God, but really not, that's really not so, because as Steve said a minute ago, these are more like straw man arguments. He's, he's bringing up some weak arguments that might be made, but usually aren't made, I, I, but it's easy for I've him to shoot heard, them down. I've right. never heard Christians use this. <laughs> right, but he says they do, and it's easy to see why. They're easy for him to shoot down. But now what does he do with all these other ones? How, what is his apologetic to answer Colossians 2.9, Philippians 2.6, 1 Timothy 3.16, Colossians 1.15-17, 1, and John 1.1? 1, 1. Here's how he argues that these verses don't apply. In Colossians 2.9, he says, Paul said that. In Philippians 2.6, he says, Paul said that. And then in uh, uh, Colossians 1.15, and also in 1 Timothy 3.6, he says, Paul said that, and Paul said that. In John 1.1, 1, 1, John said that. And he said it almost the way I'm saying it right now. And then he argues that it wasn't, that, that and you'll hear in, in previous tapes that, that Paul kind of made up all this stuff, and he was a latecomer, and he wasn't an eyewitness. He wasn't there during the ministry yeah. of Jesus, and someone else probably wrote, and he says many Bible scholars and people like that, he's probably talking about Herbert W. Armstrong or something, but even Ar Armstrong wouldn't agree with him on this. But uh, anyway, uh, he says, well, John didn't write John, and was probably brought in later by someone else, and uh, Paul was this innovator, and this, uh, this guy who wasn't a witness, and he came up with all these new ideas, and so it was Paul that said that. Yeah. And yeah. so you don't have to believe what these verses say, because Paul said that, or John said that, so you don't have to believe it. So, so, so to make sure that our listeners understand, uh, Badawi has failed to even attempt to show that the New Testament or the Bible does not prove Jesus is God because he's just excluded from consideration all, every, all, everything but the Gospels. Uh, with that said... Uh, I think uh, this is pretty easy to deal with. His arguments uh, really don't mean much, and we'll get into more of this in our shows coming up because there's a lot of this repetitious uh, argumentation by Badawi in, in coming shows. Uh, but with that, we're just about out of time. Join us again next time in this series. I'm Larry Wessels along with Steve Morrison for Christian Answers. Thank you for being with us. And remember, Jesus is Lord. He's the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except by Him. And Jesus said that. I didn't. God bless you all. Bye-bye.